Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Do you believe that the possibility of good and evil exist in the world of software? Because if you do, today we are definitely talking about one of the good guys. There is a company out there called Seraph, make a series of products such as Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and Affinity Publisher, and today they just released a new version. Across the board, new version 2.0 uh, was released. And this meant I actually had to pay some money, and I am perfectly fine with that. In fact, this is a company I like so much, I kind of like the opportunity to give them money. And I know that doesn't make a lot of sense to many of you, but I think if you are an Affinity uh, designer or photo user, you probably know where I'm coming from on this. So we got a massive upgrade here. What you see in front of you, this is Affinity Designer 2. This is sort of like um, Adobe Illustrator, but the thing is, Adobe Illustrator has, you know, Adobe subscriptions. This one, you pay once, and until a new version comes out, you just, that's it. And I also, I like it better. It's quite simply, I would rather work with this than Illustrator. We also have Affinity Photo. Uh, this is kind of the equivalent of Photoshop. They're also open source source uh, analogs out there. So for example, you could use GIMP or paint.net or whatever. I just find these two products, they work better than the open source versions in my humble opinion, and they have much more reasonable pricing than the Adobe offerings. So the 2.0 releases are out. Uh, this is the program I use all the time. In fact, as you can see in front of you, I literally used it for the thumbnail for the program we're looking at for the uh, the video for today. And what it is, is kind of organized into, you, you, you draw with shapes, it's a vector graphics based application. You can actually mix in. So you do have a pixel persona where you can work at the pixel level here. Uh, for pixel stuff though, I generally, for example here, I have this little bit of uh, the fire effect. I wanted to create the 3D effect in the thumb. I pulled that in using the selection tools from Affinity Photo in this example. So for raster stuff, I use photo. For vector stuff, I use Affinity Designer. This is the program I use by far the most. And there's a bunch of improvements here that you are across the board got some love. Everything is just more streamlined, nice to work with. I haven't encountered a single thing so far in the last, you know, 12 hours of working with it that I would rather use the old version over the new. It just seems to be a cross the board upgrade. One area where it really improved is in the layering support. So let's go and take a look at this actual source example right here. And you see you now have multiple different layer organizations. It is much cleaner here. So for example, we have this wizard, this guy right here. I can grab that as a, a group and pull it in, easily handle it like that. The performance is great. So this is made up of a ton of vectors, but we basically, you can come in and work with it, just immediately use it. It's just clean, fast, uh, useful. And, and this is an area where I find it, like Inkscape works maybe 10% of the speed of Affinity Designer in my experiences. But you'll also notice here, uh, things are just organized a bit better as well. So for example, here I got uh, color effects for the entire, oops, for the entire uh, thing. So I come in here and I can basically change the uh, luminosity level. So you got top level controls, real time interaction, definitely nice in that regard. We also got some new features, of course, uh, in here, some new tooling, uh, completely redesigned new document screen. This is one area where it was pretty hideous before. Uh, so uh, definitely a nicer, more streamlined UI in that regard. Uh, so I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna draw a bunch of shapes like so. Uh, so that is ultimately how you work with the vector graphics. Think about kind of like working with uh, construction paper, like South Park style, where you're creating things on top of other things and so on. All right, so there's my enough shapes. I'll go ahead and I'll select all of them. And then now we have this new shape builder. I can hold so hit S to do this. Look at this as a super powered Boolean tool. So you can easily come in here and start uh, adding and subtracting shapes from each other. So I could do this way and I could subtract that shape from that shape, and there is your end result. Or we could do additive. So I can come in here and basically say, okay, I want these guys to all do, 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 like so, and boom, it will create a compound shape out of that object, although we have this weird little triangle inside. All right, so there we go. We went ahead and fixed it. So new shape builder, definitely if you're making compound shapes or Boolean shapes, you're gonna find that uh, much nicer to work with. Uh, another neat thing that we have in this release and uh, let me zoom in to show you this guy. So we have this shape going on right here. We have a new knife tool as well. So you can come in and you can start with a point. So we could go from point to point and then literally uh, make cuts, make steps. So we now have two objects out of that one. So go here, we got that guy and we have that guy. So you have a new knife tool for uh, quickly organically cutting shapes out as well. Uh, another neat thing that we have going on here, and this applies to both photo and affinity designer, um, is in your effects. So right here, I'll go to the effects panel for this guy. You now see, so th this is where you do things like I could add a bevel onto this guy like that, or I can add an outline. So let's do a black outline around our shape. Easy enough like that, but you can now do anywhere there is a plus here, you can do multiple. So for example, I wanna do another uh, 
color outline. This is going to be a huge time saver for me. So let's say here, but I want to do the alignment as inside instead. You can now do multiple effects. Anything that's got a plus on it. So if I want to do uh, color overlays, I don't know how multiple color overlays would work, uh, but you can now. Uh, drop shadow here, for example. So there is a drop shadow. We'll go in one direction. Let's jack the intensity. So there you can see, but if I want to do a second shadow, I do that like that. Let's crank the intensity up on that one. Let's go in a different direction and make it big that way. So now you've got the ability to actually define multiple effects on objects. I love this. It's definitely going to be very useful uh, going forward. Another new thing that they've added is this guy right here. So it's basically a way of doing warping. Uh, so you could do quad based warp just basically does like this. So if you need to uh, basically do deformations, this is a non destructive vector based deformations. You've also got the equivalent over in the world of photo. Now photo is a program I use a little bit less. Uh, I mostly just use it for pixel selection, uh, editing things like if I need to uh, paint something out of the background, for example, uh, I will use it for that. So for example, I'll come down here and in painting brush like this. And let's say I wanted uh, this shape gone. I boom. So that I'd use it for this kind of stuff on occasion. So just raw photo editing. Uh, and it's a very powerful tool for sure. Uh, but this is where I live basically is affinity designer. So it's the one that I'm going to focus on what the new features are, but both of them got, uh, the same kind of user interface love the, uh, mobile versions, the iPad versions also did as well. Um, You'll find also everything is built into here. So your your login now is your product key, uh, and it's how you activate for the uh, iOS App Store as well. So you don't have to do any separate purchase or anything. You just download the free version and log in, and you are fully functional. Definitely uh, nice upgrades across the board, and really well worth it for me. Uh, you know that that sixty bucks I spent like four years ago was one of the best sixty dollars spends I've ever done. This is a program I do use daily. Uh, any thumbnail you see on this uh, site is using. It. Uh, and I, it's for if you're dealing with text placement layers, or if you're doing vector graphics artwork for your game, uh, or if you need uh, raster graphics, again, you've got a variety of different pixel brushes and different options here. Painting, this is an aspect of the program that I'm not really focusing on today, but they're a really, really capable suite and they have a very fair one and done licensing system. So they're functional, capable, good software at a good value under an ethical license. It's just, wow, shocking how that works, eh? So if you're interested here, V2, uh, there's a ton of features of functionality new in here. Uh, I don't really focus on the publisher side of things unless you're making uh, you know, magazines or static websites, you're not going to really use that one much. Uh, but on the vector side, again, we do have that new uh, vector wrapping. You got the new shape builder for making compound shapes quickly. You have the new knife tool. You also have um, tools for uh, measuring shapes uh, and sizes and such, or the total area of a thing. You have an x-ray view available and you can import DXF and DWG files. So if you're bringing in CAD, you're working from that area, you could do that as well. Um, in the world of Affinity Photo, you have uh, non-destructive raw uh, support. Uh, so you've got live masks here. So you do hue range changes, uh, band pass changes, so high band um, editing there, uh, luminosity, or again, real time controls over there, uh, compound masks. So you can easily combine multiple mask layers together non-destructively, add intersect, subtract, or XOR operations. I mean, separate masks you've created can be maintained non-destructively while you create new masks based on those com component parts. Uh, there is, again, they have their own live mesh warp feature and functionality. So if you had to do something like make a page curl, it's amazing how often you actually have to just slightly warp something. Um, and this is, a, you know, a capable and powerful tool. There's also, again, the vector one as well. Uh, Brush Engine got some uh, improvements as well. So if you're using this as a paint tool, a number of improvements in that regard. Publisher uh, got improvement. I don't think for a game dev channel, many of you care about Publisher. Uh, but the other thing you're going to find is there's some across the board upgrades as well. So again, the new document screens and recent document screens got upgrade the layers area just got completely rewritten and revamped and it's just so much nicer to work with uh, you also have better drag and drop support quick menus and so on um, and then the iPads all got all their software got upgraded as well again those are pretty much one-to-one -one feature compatible versions they're also iPad 16 iOS 16 iPad OS 16 Ugh. iPad OS 16 ready um, and a number of um, other improvements across the board. So quick grid, multiple layer effects. Uh, that one is, again, one of my favorite and what I showcased available in all the apps. Quick bitmap fill, pencil tools were improved. 
uh, content linking, uh, you name it. So there is a ton of improvements across the board to all of this software. Uh, and if you are curious, how much is this going to cost you? Well, that is up to you. Basically, I went for this package. It's $139 Canadian, which is probably like 100 bucks US, maybe 110. You get everything. So you get Affinity Designer, Photo, Publisher, as well as the Mac OS versions of all of those software as well. So you get it for Mac, Windows, iOS, uh, for all three versions for just over a hundred bucks. Uh, One-time payment, and until Affinity version three comes out, uh, you get all the free upgrades in the meantime. Like I said, for Affinity, Affinity one to two, that lasted like, again, four or five years for me. It's, it's amazing value. Or if you want, right now, everything is discounted. So it's normally, what, about 80 bucks US, $75 US. Uh, you can get it right now for something like 40 something. Uh, so, uh, you know, instead of $100 Canadian, it's 56 bucks uh, right now. So it's 40% off, I believe is it is, if you do the math, each individual component. But you see here, if you're going to pick up two of them, uh, you basically get all the iPad versions for free or whatever, uh, or you can get pretty much like an all of the above for 130 bucks. Now that is for individuals. Uh, business pricing is a little bit more expensive, but uh, not, hey, it's actually cheaper. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, okay. I'm not sure why business is actually slightly cheaper than uh, I, need, I need to dig into that a little bit more. And there's also educational versions, educational licensing that's even cheaper. So uh, again, one of the good guys out there, uh, Affinity products, I highly recommend them. You know, even if they were more expensive, uh, even if they were subscription based, to be honest, I would probably still use Affinity Designer over Illustrator. Illustrator just never spoke to me and Inkscape, I just have so many performance issues on it and I don't like the UI if I'm honest about things. Uh, Affinity Designer is just, it's... Uh, the software equivalent of my spirit animal. <laughs> uh, I, I literally couldn't do my job without this guy. Uh, and if I was doing any kind of vector graphics for artwork, uh, for games, again, this would be the program that I was used for it as well. I just highly recommend Affinity Designer. Again, Affinity Photo is quite solid as well. I just don't use it to anywhere near its potential. I can't speak to it that much. Uh, but both are very solid software sold under a very ethical license for a very good price. Uh, I, I just gush. Yeah, I'm gushing and I'm done gushing. Uh, so if you're interested in picking up a vector and raster graphics based application, have heck of a sale going on right now. And again, you're going to be able to use it for four, five, six years. Also do keep in mind, if you're using Affinity uh, 1.x right now, you can still keep using it. You can use it forever and ever. If none of the, none of the things they've added look like that useful to you, just don't upgrade. You don't have to. You, your software keeps working. Uh, and uh, Bob's your uncle. So let me know what you think of this all in general, what you think of their licensing, the whole novel idea of paying for software once and only upgrading if the next version is worth it to you. And if you're wondering if you're an existing Affinity user, is the upgrade worth it? In my humble opinion, yes. And I've only been using it for a day. Uh, going back would be painful. And I always look at that as the good judge. If you've used the new version, is going back to the old version hard? If the answer is no, probably not the greatest upgrade. If the answer is yes, they did good. And in my opinion, they did good. But I'd love to hear your opinion on their software, uh, on the company, on these business practices in the comments down below. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.